In this video, we'll walk you through creating your own certificate authority on Windows so that you can run HTTPS sites without issue. To get started, you'll need the OpenSSL command line application. On Windows, it's possible to configure your environment to run the OpenSSL commands. You just need some additional tools. While there are OpenSSL binaries for Windows, they're not officially supported by the OpenSSL team and can be difficult to work with in a Windows terminal environment. The most straightforward way is to install Git for Windows, which comes bundled with OpenSSL and the Git Bash utility. Once you open a Git Bash window, you can run the same OpenSSL commands as you would for Mac OS or Linux with one small difference. Due to how OpenSSL works in Git Bash, you need to prefix all OpenSSL commands using the WinPTY utility. So for example, the following command is how to generate the private key to become a local CA in Git Bash. The other small differences are in the file paths in Git Bash. When you open a Git Bash instance, the home directory in the terminal is mapped to your user directory in Windows, but with a Linux-like directory structure. So if your user directory is located at C backslash users backslash hellfish in Windows, your Git Bash home directory will be C forward slash users forward slash hellfish. Now that we're set up, we can start the process. First, we can create a location to store our local certificate files. This is not a requirement, but it makes it much easier to find the keys later. With that set up, we're ready to generate the private key to become a local CA. OpenSSL will ask for a passphrase, which we will recommend not skipping and keeping safe. The passphrase will prevent anyone who gets your private key from generating a root certificate of their own. The output should look something like this. Next, we generate a root certificate. You'll be prompted for the passphrase of the private key you just chose and a bunch of questions. The answers to those questions aren't that important. They just show up when looking at the certificate, which you will almost never do. We suggest making the common name something that you'll recognize as your root certificate in a list of other certificates. That's really the only thing that matters here. You should now have two files, myca.key, your private key, and myca.pem, your root certificate. And congratulations, you're now a CA. Well, sort of. We need to take the root certificate to the Microsoft Management Console so that any SSL certificates we generate using the root CA certificate are trusted on the local machine. So first, open the Microsoft Management Console by using the Windows plus R keyboard combination, typing MMC and clicking open. Now go to file, then add slash remove snap in. Click certificates and add. Select computer account and click next. Select local computer, then click finish. Click OK to go back to the MMC window. Double click certificates, local computer to expand the view. Select trusted root certification authorities, right click on certificates in the middle column under object type and select all tasks and then import. Click next and then browse. Change the certificate extension dropdown next to the file name field to all files and locate the myca.pem file. Click open then next. Lastly, select place all certificates in the following store. Trusted root certification authority store is the default. Click next, then click finish to complete the wizard. If everything went according to plan, you should see your CA certificate listed under trusted root certification authorities certificates. Now we can sign certificates for any new dev sites that need HTTPS. First, we create a private key for the dev site. Note that we named the private key using the domain name URL of the dev site. This is not required, but it makes it easier to manage, especially if you have multiple sites. Then we create a CSR. You'll get all the same questions as you did previously, and again, your answers don't matter. In fact, they matter even less because you won't be looking at the certificate in a list next to others. Finally, we'll create an X509 version 3 certificate extension config file, which is used to define the subject alternative name SAN for the certificate. 
In our case, we'll create a configuration file called hellfish.test.ext containing the following text. We'll be running OpenSSL X509 because the X509 command allows us to edit certificate trust settings. In this case, we're using it to sign the certificate in conjunction with the config file, which allows us to set the subject alternative name. Now we run the command to create the certificate using our CSR, the CA private key, the CA certificate, and the config file. We now have three files, hellfish.test.key, the private key, hellfish.test.csr, the certificate signing request file, and hellfish.test.crt, the signed certificate. We can configure local web servers to use HTTPS with the private key and the signed certificate. If you're running a Windows environment which uses Nginx, you can use the same instructions from our install WordPress on Ubuntu 20.04 series, link in the description. If you're on Windows using Apache, you'll need to enable the Apache SSL mod and configure an Apache virtual host for port 443 for the local site. It will require you to add the SSL engine, SSL certificate file, and SSL certificate key file directives and point the last two to the certificate and key file you just created. So there you have it, how to become your own local certificate authority to sign your local SSL certificates and use HTTPS on your local sites. Hopefully this will eliminate the annoying your connection is not private message on your local development websites on Windows. As always, if you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and we can't wait to see you in that next video.